Okay, let's see why theorem, theorem 12, theorem 12, right? Theorem 12, theorem 12, theorem 12, theorem 12, theorem 12. Theorem 12. Let's see why theorem 12 makes sense in R3. Um, you know, if you have a bit, let's see, you have a candidate for a basis, let's say, uh, whatever, 2, 0, um, 4, 1, 1, 0, and why not 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, does that work? Yeah. Okay. Um, I got three vectors here. Dimension of R3 is, of course, three. So I need to check um, that this set is independent or check that it spans. Let's see why theorem 12 makes a lot of sense here. So if I form this matrix from these vectors, there are one. You can do a step or two of row reduction. Oh, it's going to take me two, isn't it? Oh, my life is so hard. Okay, uh, okay, so I reduce that to echelon form. And uh, what do I see? What am I trying to point out here? Um, a square matrix. A square matrix has a pivot for every column. Um, if and only if it has a pivot for every row. If and only if it has pivot for every row. So what does that mean? Therefore, B is independent if and only if it spans R3. Okay, so this tells you why theorem 12 makes sense in R3, R4, R5, whatever. Basically comes down to a property of a square matrix, you know. Okay, independence, the presence of a pivot for every column, automatically implies a pivot for every row, which automatically implies that the span of this guy is R3. Okay, so you can't have a set like this with three elements that somehow is independent but doesn't spam. So what am I saying? So theorem 12 is easy to see. for R3, or maybe I should say the truth of, the truth of. So the truth of theorem 12 is easy to see for R3. OK, next example, pause and copy, pause and copy. Okay, this, this example 
is I'm not going to be able to use theorem 12. So this is a separate example. I just want to go through to give you a, a bit more experience with polynomials. Um, I won't use theorem 12. I suppose you could use theorem 12, but it'd be, it wouldn't be uh, efficient, I don't think. So I want to find the dimension here. Okay, so I should get an idea of what polynomials are actually in here. Um, so if P is in H, what does that mean? P is equal to A plus B T plus C T cubed. And how can I translate this into an equation involving A, B, and C? What I'm doing is I'm plugging one in here. I get A plus B plus C is zero. And then if I take this, that's plugging two in here. I got it squared here. What do I so I have a typo here. I have a typo right there. It should be a squared. So what was I saying? To interpret this in terms of A, B, and C, I plug two in here and set it equal to zero. And what do I get? A plus two B plus four C is equal to zero. Now, I want to understand what this means. So I should reduce it, right? I should put it into a matrix. Uh, where this is my A column, B column, C column, and reduce that. Subtract one, three, zero. Uh -huh. So I'm reducing all the way to reduced echelon form. Minus two, zero, zero, one, three, zero. So I get A is equal to negative two plus two C. B is equal to minus three C. So P, which is equal to A plus BT plus CT squared, I can make these replacements here. A becomes 2C, B becomes minus 3C. Factor of the C, and what do we see? Going back to blue, we see that if I have a polynomial in H, it must be of this form. So it must be a linear combination of this guy. Okay, so what does all this do for us? Okay, what I've shown here in blue and green is that therefore um, H is equal to this span. So therefore, I call it B is this set of one polynomial spans H and is independent. Why do I know it's independent so clearly? Well, it's a set of a single non-zero vector.
Okay, so therefore, B is a basis for H and therefore dimension of H. Well, I'm just counting the number of vectors in here. It's one. 